Hello and welcome to Altcoin XP. My name is Anthony and today I'm sharing with you how the Doge Ethereum bridge works. But first, wouldn't it be helpful if I explained what the Doge Ethereum bridge is? Well, a bridge is also known as a two-way peg and it's intended to bridge two cryptocurrencies together. For Doge Ethereum, those two cryptocurrencies are Ether and Dogecoin. And the idea is that if a user sends Dogecoin on the Dogecoin blockchain, they'll receive the same value of Ether on the Ethereum blockchain and vice versa. Currently, Doge Ethereum doesn't complete this full cycle yet, but it's a third of the way there. It can, for all intents and purposes, convert Dogecoin to a Doge token. The Doge token is a token on the Ethereum blockchain. Right now, it's possible for a user to send Dogecoin on the Dogecoin blockchain and receive the same amount of Doge token on the Ethereum blockchain. Doing so also locks up the Dogecoin that you sent. This way, both units can not exist at the same time. Like I said before, this is only a third of the way complete. Currently, there is no working implementation that bridges Dogecoin to Ether. And also, there is no implementation that locks up Ether in exchange for Dogecoin. So what does this process look like in action? Well, the first step is for a user to send Dogecoin to a special Dogecoin address that locks up Dogecoin they sent to it. Then there is a piece of software called the Doge Submitter Agent which watches for transactions going to the special Dogecoin address and sends that information to the Doge Relay contract on the Ethereum network. Next, since anyone can run the submitter agent and make submissions to Doge Relay, we must verify that the submissions are valid transactions from the Dogecoin blockchain. Otherwise, someone could fake a transaction resulting in the false issuance of Doge tokens. In order to verify the transaction, the script proof of work hashing function must be run to see if the outputs match what the Dogecoin blockchain says is correct. There's one issue with that though. Script is really resource intensive and therefore really expensive to compute. It's estimated to cost around 300 million gas on the Ethereum network to complete, which even if you wanted to pay that much, wouldn't work since Ethereum currently can only process about 8 million gas per Ethereum block. To learn more about gas, I have a dedicated gas video that you could check out. But this gas issue won't stop us. There is a way around this by using the Truebit network. The Truebit network runs separately from the Ethereum blockchain and lets us run computations off-chain, which means we can run the script verification there. So the Doge Relay contract sends the needed information over to the Truebit network that is being watched by its participants. When the Truebit participants see a request come in, they'll begin verifying it. You might be asking, how can we guarantee the Truebit network can be trusted to provide correct proofs? Well, the answer is tokens. Truebit participants purchase true tokens with real money, and those tokens are needed to participate in the network. If a participant provides incorrect verification, a portion of their tokens will be taken from them. And all other Truebit participants will be waiting to challenge their verifications because they'll get a reward for doing so. Currently though, true tokens do not exist, so the current system works on the honor system. But in the future, this is the way it will work. Anyway, back to verification. If a certain number of blocks pass by without being challenged by the Truebit network, the proof of work will be considered correct. Truebit will tell the Doge Relay contract that everything is good, and the Relay contract will tell that to the Doge token contract. Then the Doge token contract will give Doge tokens to the Ethereum address, which uses the same private key as the original sending Dogecoin address. That's a best case scenario because the submitter was honest. However, if the submitter was dishonest and submitting false transactions, this is where the verification game comes in. This is a bit complicated to explain and I may not fully understand all of it, so bear with me. 
I'll tell you what I do know, but I do have some questions about some things, why they're done that way and how they work. The script proof of work algorithm uses 2050 rounds of the salsa 8 hashing function. The goal of the verification game is to see exactly where in those 2050 rounds the claimant and verifier disagree. Did they disagree at round 1, round 2050, or somewhere in between? To find this out, the verifier queries the claimant for its hashing result at middle points. If they disagree at step 2050, what was their answer at step 1024? If they agree at step 1024, then what was their answer at step 512? This goes on until the exact point of disagreement is found. Then that single hash calculation is performed on the Ethereum blockchain which provides the security of the entire Ethereum network to validate the claimant initiated a false transaction. This uses way less gas than doing all 2050 rounds on the Ethereum network. What I don't understand is wouldn't round one of a hash almost always be different if two parties use different inputs? To explain this simply, let's use the number one to represent the hashing function and the number two to represent a correct transaction, and the number three to represent a false transaction. If we do five rounds of this function, we get seven as a result for the correct transaction, and eight as a result for the false transaction. But the point of disagreement is at step one. So maybe I'm misunderstanding something here, which is entirely possible. But if not, maybe it would be more efficient to always query step one first. If they agree on step one, then they can start the verification game. Anyway, with that aside, that's how the Doge Ethereum bridge works and the current state of the project. It can take some time to research this stuff, so I hope this video helped you and saved you some time of doing it yourself. If it has, please like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, consider donating Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash to the addresses both on screen and in the video description. I just updated my Bitcoin donation address to a SegWit compatible address. I'll still be getting donations to the old address, but please use this new one going forward as it'll save on transaction fees. Lastly, follow me on all social media, and thank you, take care, and goodbye.